From the previous screencast, you'll see that we've got this information, which is just serialized, uh, serialized object in the UI. What we're going to do now is we're going to update the UI so that we've got a chart that displays the information. It's not yet being um, consuming information from Pusher, but it's obviously if we get the UI working and all the code working, then we can see real time updates being pushed in. So the first thing we want to do is shift this um, because because the HTML is getting a bit cluttered now. We'll shift this into this JavaScript section over here, which is quite handy. Oh, and we'll also put it in a um, kind of an onload block or on content ready. So you'll see on the right hand side that this is updating. So every time we make an edit, JS bin updates the the current view so that we can see what the result of the code looks like. Okay, so that's everything still working. We can go over here, we can send the event, you'll see the event appear over here, over on the right hand side. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start using the smoothie chart. So over here we've got smoothie charts. Um, there is here's the, the JavaScript for it, so we'll include that. Okay, so that's included. We also need a canvas element. So let's take this canvas element. Let's put it in here. And we'll remove that and put a canvas element in there. We'll call it time series. Um, so now we've got a canvas element, we've got the smoothie charts JavaScript library in in the page, we can now create a smoothie object. And we want to um, add it, add, add the UI for the, the chart to the page. We'll get the actual element rather than the jQuery object for the time series element. Okay, so now we can see the UI, we've got the, the scrolling background um, to give it the time effect. Uh, the next thing we want to do is actually plot some information. So we'll um, get out of this event handler function specifically for that. So we know from the JSON that there are multiple devices. We can see in here there are multiple devices within the payload of the JSON. So what we'll do to start off with is we'll just take the first device. And then we'll create a time series for that. And the way it works it is you append data to the time series. So um, the first parameter is some time, so now, and the data is obviously the actual usage, so device usage. And then the final thing we want to do is we need to obviously add it to the smoothie chart. So we've got the code there, but how do we test that it works? So we can obviously um, go over here, send an event, send another event, jump back here. We've got a value. 
but there's no data for some reason. Okay, so what I think the problem is here is that there is a line added, but it's white and it's right at the top, which we obviously can't see because the border of the smoothie chart is white. So what we'll do here is we'll um, add some fill colour to the the series. So I've got a predefined function here, which I can use, um, which gives us an RGB value um, for the stroke and an RGBA for the fill. So um, added colours equals. And then here I can add I can add a uh, stroke style. And I can add a fill style. And we've got 14 warnings, which isn't a good sign. Okay. So there we go. So we get our UI back, and if we now send a test event, we still don't get any colours. Ah, okay, we also need a line width. Okay, so they're the two different events we've sent there. So I click twice and I've got two events. So the problem we've got there is that we can, we've obviously got two time series appearing. The other thing is that it's now it's a little bit tricky to be jumping across to the event emitter in Pusher, in the Pusher dashboard. So what I'll do now is I'll actually add a function here that helps us test that. So in the style of Blue Peter is something I created earlier. So this sends a test event um, on the channel. So this um, this channel that we have defined here, it emits a, an, a usage updated event with this event data. Um, the other thing we should do is let's have some UI to trigger that to just make it a bit easier to use. So I click handle for that. So now we've got this test button up here, we should be able to click there and we'll see that because we're actually adding new time series every time rather than appending to them, that we're getting actual new series appearing on the chart. So we don't want that, what we want is we want a way of um, finding time series for each of the devices and then just appending to them. So what we'll do is we'll strip this piece of code out and we'll create a get time series function and we'll pass in device.name. So you probably didn't want to get rid of all that, did we? You wanted you want to keep the append part. Okay, so we want 
series, have a name. Um, so if we have a look up, this will be of name to time series object. And first we try and get the time series object from this lookup by name. And if we can't find one for it, then we want to create one. And so we don't want that piece of code there. So we create a new time series object. We add it to the smoothie chart, and we also need to add it to the lookup. so that when we try and find it next time it, it is present. Okay. So no, we've got arrows somewhere. Okay, syntax error. Oh, there's no method called append. Uh, because we need to return the time series object. Okay, this time. So now, every time we send one of these test events, you can see that the time series actually updates. Okay. Um, so the next thing and final thing to do is we are only plotting one time series for the multiple multiple devices. So in the plot usage series, what we need to do is let's let's create a new function. Specifically to plot the information for just a single device. Refactored that slightly, it still works. Now, instead of taking this first one, we want to loop through all the devices. So we'll just use a for loop. And instead of getting the first element in the array, we'll get the one within the loop. So this time we should be plotting, um, in here we've got three devices. So every time we get an update, we should be plotting, we should be adding new data for each of the time series. So for the three time series for the three devices. So you can see now we've got three lines for each of the time series for each of the devices. So if we let that go for a moment, and then I go over to the this dashboard, you can see it's pretty straight. I go over here and I can send an event, I'm sent through, and you'll see this by the way that it's curved up there. That was from Pusher that that was sent. Okay, that's that screencast complete. So in the screencast, we showed how to update the UI that was just showing some um, JSON to use smoothie charts. Um, to start off with, there was no data. We then added a single time series, um, which represented it, a usage from one device. Um, we then updated the code so that we updated a time series rather than adding a new one for each event. Um, we then made a change so that multiple time series were created for each device and for the usage of each device. Um, and then we showed how to uh, trigger events in code and then through the event creator within Pusher. Uh, the next thing would obviously be to show how to 
trigger events from a service or a server. Uh, maybe something that's hooked up to some real, real electronic components that are using electricity or um, you know, an electricity monitor itself. Uh, my name's Phil Legator. I'm a developer evangelist at Pusher.